Hello and welcome to the Friday, February 23rd, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. For those of you still brave enough to run on-premise exchange, the Microsoft Exchange team has an updated uh, blog with new guidance regarding the exclusions that should be enabled for antivirus scanners running on exchange servers. In particular, they are now recommending to no longer exclude the PowerShell.exe and W3WP.exe binaries or processes. And also they're recommending to remove certain folder exclusions from any exclusions that you may have set up. So scan more and hopefully find more malware that may be lurking on your exchange server. And the National Security Agency, NSA, has published a pretty comprehensive document with best practices for securing your home network. It's mostly targeting uh, teleworkers, so work from home scenarios, and really sort of covers all the bases here in a fairly concise and easy to read manner. It doesn't really provide sort of the very detailed guidance as to, for example, how to update a particular firewall or a particular operating systems, but outlines sort of some of the basic things that you uh, should be watching out for, like keeping software and uh, routers and such up to date, keeping uh, webcams covered if you are not using them. Also, a couple more advanced things, like for example, network segmentation for your home network and also configuration of wireless networks, but they are now recommending WPA3, which uh, may be a little bit uh, early. I'm not sure how well different devices are supporting this at this point. The target audience is less technical, more sort of your average home user or work from home employee. And organizations that are looking for a well-managed place to put their servers but are not quite ready yet to go full cloud, well, you may choose to place your server in a data center. And according to a report by ReSecurity, hackers have recently been exchanging information in hacker forums that outline uh, credentials uh, being used by employees in these data centers in order to manage uh, these systems. Apparently, there were a number of uh, CCTV cameras that were also breached. Also, the attackers were going after ticketing uh, systems. And then, of course, after uh, baseboard management controllers, so BMCs and uh, various uh, lights out systems. This information, of course, could either be used then by the attacker to social engineer data center employees to, for example, act on behalf of a client. You often just call the data center or file a ticket to have them, for example, remove or add equipment or maybe do things like, for example, reboot a server in a kind of safe mode or such to allow easy access in case, for example, passwords were lost. The data centers affected by this particular set of attacks were mostly in Asia, so China. They also mention Singapore as one of the targets. So this certainly qualifies as a supply chain attack. We also have a couple of news about some of the more traditional uh, supply chain attacks. There is yet another 15,000 spam packages that were apparently submitted to NPM repository, mostly uh, to spread uh, phishing links. And then other goal of uh, this attack is also to then inject referral links where essentially then the attacker is getting some kind of referral fee whenever a victim is clicking on a link that was injected by these malicious NPM packages. And if there are malicious NPM packages, we also must have some new malicious PyPy packages. Uh, Fortinet found some that uh, sort of uh, masquerade as HTTP related uh, packages and install malicious code via setup.py. 
And in other miscellaneous news, we have updates for PFSense fixing some uh, vulnerabilities in open source software used by PFSense. Uh, Google Chrome released an update. And it shouldn't be a surprise if you find some uh, expensive uh, Apple software like Final Cut Pro for free all of a sudden that it may come with some unwanted add-on like a crypto coin miner. That's it for today. Uh, thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday.